Today I'm going to show you how I painted this whimsical mushroom scene, um, being as it's September. And before I start that though, I'm just going to do a quick flip through uh, through my um, sketchbook here. This is one that I've dedicated to mushrooms and mushrooms alone. And um, you might find this mildly interesting. This, uh, this has all been done this week actually. This one here, this is um, a page of mushrooms which I painted from memory. Um, I didn't have any uh, examples in front of me, nothing, just my mind. And I used this set of paints, which is a new set which I've got from um, a company in Germany. These are all handmade, very pure and lovely watercolours, and I'm going to be featuring those in a video coming up, uh, which you could, you could also obtain a set if you wish. Um, there'll be details of the link to the website in the um, show notes, somebody called it the other day, in the description below. Um, this is my second sketch. This one is based on a picture I found on, uh, I don't know, somewhere online. And it's not dissimilar from that, but I added some ferns and leaves at the bottom there, still using the same set of paints. This one is a development of the same idea. I did the loose watercolour and then I um, just basically enhanced it a little bit using a Winsor & Newton sepia fine liner. This one was a 0.5. Uh, just going around the outside edges, I added some oak leaves as well as some ferny kind of greenery. Um, then this one here, um, I used my big nature book. This one here, um, this is the AA, Automobile Association Book of Nature, circa 1960. And in it, there's a page of fungi, which are available in England and Europe. So I used this as my guide for drawing these mushrooms. And honestly, I do think that it's better to go to a book for your source material if you don't have the actual object in front of you. Better than going to Pinterest because... On or online, um, because you just don't know whether what you're looking at is true or real or in any way any, anything to do with nature. Yesterday, Tamsin was looking online for a, I think she was in um, something like Unsplash or Pixabay, one of those um, applications. No, it was Google picture, Google Google Images or whatever they call it. I don't remember anyway. Whoever it was, and she was searching for a a cake that hadn't cooked properly. She wanted a photograph of one. And a picture came up which said, oh, this is AI generated. This is a photograph, but it's AI generated. And it was a picture of a cake. And on the inside of the cake was a completely raw egg, although the outside was cooked. I mean, this is nonsense. That can't possibly happen. Um, but this is what we're facing. And that's an extreme example of something purporting to be real, but actually being unreal. And I don't like that. It makes me feel un unstable. Anyway, so these ones I did from that book. And then I developed that a little bit further to this little collection, same book, same references, same method. This is loose watercolor, still using this VH aquarelle set. Um, basically trying that out. And this book, Viviva one, this is 100% cotton, but it's like, it's from India and it's like cardi paper. So it's um, <clears throat> rough. It's, it's slightly ivory shade and it's slightly rough. Now this one, I want to do a few more here. This is in watercolor pencil, which is quite nice. I don't do that very often, but uh, it is quite a pleasant thing to do. This one is in ink. Um, I used the Tombow um, Fudenosuke brush pen there with its nice dark and light lines. And then I just shaded it in a little bit with watercolor pencil. Um, here I've got watercolor pencil again. I've gone away from mushrooms a little bit, but this is just a sort of study of, there's a bird there in a little bush and a study of leaves which um, might want to uh, embellish the mushrooms at some point. And then I sort of switched into a whimsical mushroom arrangement, something along the lines of this. This is all preparatory work prior to doing the paintings that I do for the, for the video. 
And then the most recent one is this one, which I did this morning. Um, again, just a page of shapes turned into mushrooms and then embellished with the pen. I used a 0.3 this time, uh, Winsor & Newton fine liner. So there we are. And I've still got, I think, about 10 pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pages left in here to fill. And this is going to be a complete mushroom journal. And I'm hoping to finish that this coming week. And um, so now I'm going to, having practiced that, I'm going to um, have a go using these paints these Viviva paints. I've got them sort of lying around here scattered and we'll see what we can do. The idea is I think when you do a mushroom um, you paint the top or at least this is what I do kind of loosely like that and then you're going to want to put in the stalk like that and then the underneath, it's going to be a different color, this part here. And then once that's kind of blended in a bit, you can do some details. And uh, we can, or you could do it the other way up. You could start with the stem and the underside and then put the top. And then once you've done that, again, you can do some details. So we could um, doodle them, you know, so we could have a nice red one like that. And then he would have probably, I don't know what these mushrooms have in the way of stalks, but uh, something like that. I don't know what color they are in real life, I mean, but doesn't matter, does it? So let's do another one. Uh, let's do a reddish brown one, shall we? Nice big one like that. With a brown stalk like that, maybe. And then, uh, okay, let's have some tiny ones. So some little baby ones. Have some more here, perhaps. If you have a set of colors that you like, like these um, Viviva uh, doodars, um, you can sort of just paint more or less randomly and you'll probably get an effect that you quite like. I think that's, that's one of the things that you can do. So let's then put in some leaves behind the mushrooms. You can adapt this for anything really. It's just a page of what it is, is is turning into a page of autumnal elements, not elephants. No, there's no elephant in the room here. I'm just using the Viviva sap green to do the background. Maybe we'll have uh, a 
few more mushrooms down here, perhaps. Or maybe we'll do some, just some leaves, actually. Perhaps we'll turn what was going to be mushrooms into, into some fallen leaves. What do you think? Just using one brush, the same size all along, and just sort of letting it build up. This brush holds quite a lot of paint. And then we might go back up here and go over the top and perhaps Just a bit of red on this one. nice and light and then where the uh, stalk goes behind you're going to want to make it a little bit darker there. I think I'm going to bring this one down Make this into a really nice big one. Coming in with some ink blue there to just do some veins. Some bits of shadow. It's a good purple, which when you mix that with brown, that gives you a, a much darker brown. I think I'm going to have to let that dry now and then we'll come back and we'll put some bits and pieces on top, props, perhaps. So this would go all sorts of different ways at the moment. Um, hard to know exactly what to do for the best or which will be most fun. But what I've done at, at the moment, I've taken my Pertic uh, brush, watercolour brushes, and I'm just going to... Uh, try to restore some of my equilibrium um, by, uh, I just had an argument with the bike. Um, so least said about that, the better. Um, so I'll just uh, do some of this to sort of bring me back to sanity. <clears throat> uh, just drawing little leaves on little stems and uh, so that will do for now and I'll do a few more over here I suppose the thing is you know people talk about how painting calms you down and so on and um, the but the problem is Yes, it does. It really does. But the problem is starting. And, you know, you can sort of go into your space, wherever that is, whether it's a um, a bureau leaning up against the wall somewhere or a corner of a table or the corner of the kitchen table or um, where else could you be painting? An easel stacked up against the wall somewhere 
trying to think all the different places I've painted. I had an office at one time that um, I used to steal the desk of, which is basically what I'm doing at the moment. This isn't a proper art table. This is just a, an old kitchen table that I've uh, painted with white, uh, what do you call it, chalk paint, which I have to go over for every, every time, every now and again. And uh, yeah, so anyway, what am I talking about? I don't know, no idea, I'll shut up now. Um, yeah, calming down, yes, that's it. See, that's the thing, it's easy to say, well, calming, uh, painting calms you down, but you've just, you've got to actually start and then you've got to think of something to do, which I think is where YouTube comes in for a lot of people, isn't it? Because you go, oh, I'll find something to do on online and then maybe you go to Pinterest and and you think, well, yeah, yeah, but, but no. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say, what to do, what to think. That's the wrong colour, it doesn't matter. Um, these pens are quite good. The only problem with watercolour brush pens is that sometimes you have to go hunting for different colours that you might not have. It's amazing. All these greens are bluish. I just want to put more veins and things and stems in and it's too difficult using the brush. You can do it but it's harder and I prefer to do it this way. So put the veins in like this. And you can sharpen up the shapes as well, you can go over the whole thing and make it a slightly better shape. You've given yourself a bit of a design with the brush and then you can do that. Oh, this is going to be one of those ones that I don't want to share. <coughs> Excuse me, but I will, nevertheless. I like the way a lot of mushrooms have got sort of little skirts near the top, haven't they? So we just put that in. And then we could do some nice. Now that's interesting because I thought that that was going to work, this artistro, but I don't think it is. It's not going to work. I wonder whether the Posca pen will, because I think I might, yeah, I think I'm going to have to use the uh, bleed proof white. Because um, this is going to be the only way to actually get white dots. Oh, maybe we won't even get white dots with this. This could be a problem with the um, Viviva. It could be. They might just suck up the pigment from underneath. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. That's on this one. That seems to be okay. I don't think it's sucking.
Maybe we'll do these ones a bit more oval. Like that, perhaps. Look very spotty, don't they? That will do, I think, for that. Hopefully that won't. I think it's better than using a pen, definitely. So that's the PH Martins bleed proof white. That's quite good. And then um, I wanted to do some in red, some, no, it's not going to work in red. I have to do it in, I wonder if it work in brown. Just kind of break up the edge of the mushroom because they do tend to, don't they? Somewhat like that. And then, should we try to put some lines in for the gills? And this one. Uh, Something like that. Okay, and then orange. Is this orange? I think I want a slightly darker orange there. Well, actually, you know what, they're fine. We just put a little bit, a little bit in from place to place. I think they're fine actually. Maybe their legs need a little bit of reinforcement, perhaps in some places. Um, um, hum, 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 hum. Need to soften that line there a bit. I think a bit harsh. And you can lift it out a bit with a tissue, make it a bit lighter. So I think I'm going to pick up a bit more green and come back if I can find some. Just make the leaves a bit darker. And then probably want a few more. Like we did on the other one I did the other day, just painting over the top of half of the leaf is quite effective. So I think I'll just add some ink blue to that sap green so that we've got a nice dark colour for the stems. Maybe we'll put a few more shadowy leaves in.
keep going. It's not finished till it's finished. And we, I think we'll put some white in at some point soon. Um, it's my brick red, a little bit of brick red in here. Break that up a bit. That is a good colour. So this is, this is a carpet of autumn leaves. And the woodland behind it, just full of colour. So you can just have fun artistically or not putting leaves everywhere and mushrooms. These could be mushrooms. And I don't know about using white. What do you think? I think some of these leaves probably could do a bit of white. I think those ones are still wet. So we better wait for everything to dry. Meanwhile, let's put some more. We need lots of um, dark, you could call them low lights if you wanted to, I suppose. It's the opposite to a high light. But the, the dark brush strokes. So I'm mixing ink blue with sap green to give me a nice dark punch, punch, punch of colour. Sometimes a little bit bigger, sometimes a bit smaller, but something contrasty. Nice and contrasty. I want to put some white in there in a minute. And if you can get your hand to release, I just fell over, I fell on my hand. That's what I was going on about the bike. Um, it started to rain suddenly and I didn't want to leave it outside. So I went to go and get it in and, oh, I don't know. You know what bikes are like, they can have a mind of their own and it kind of just twisted away from me and pulled me over. That's, let that be a lesson to you, it said. Teach you to think you could still ride a bike. Mm, probably not. Okay, well, I think we're getting towards a point of, I think probably we do want a bit of white, if I can get it to work. On these skirts. Perhaps a little bit here. Um, 
what else? Oh yeah. And I don't know, what do you think? Do we want um, any black? Do we want Probably not, I don't think. I don't think I can be bothered with that. I think it's probably okay. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. And we could, we could put, uh, I know this, this is probably not a good idea because, no, I probably won't do that. I could try it with the red. I was going to say I could go around the outside. No, that's not dark enough. You could, when that's dry, that's not completely dry where I've got the white there. So we can't really do that. But um, you could, uh, you could go around the white spots with something darker to give it a little bit more. Um, you know, standing outness. Oh, I might put it in the frame and see what it looks like, shall I? So here we are, we have a um, vibrant mushroom forest. And I tried this in a frame and I thought to myself, you know, this is a little bit too much. I like it, I like what I've done, but I think that um, really I can use this in a much better way than just to um, frame it or put it in a drawer somewhere. So I thought I'm going to make um, this into three things. So first of all, I started off with um, a little mount here and I selected the bit of it that I thought would make quite a nice little picture. So this section here, I think, is, is what I want. What I did actually, I, I made a photocopy first of all and then I cut that up. So that's my photocopy, which told me which I, <laughs> I've run out of blue ink. So <laughs> it came out a funny color, but that's fine. So I'm going to, first of all, cut that bit off of the painting and put that over there. And this will go in a little frame like that and that. So there we are, that's quite nice. Okay, so that's step one. That looks much better than the whole thing, which was a little bit too much. So, so that's my first part. And then, so that can go over there. And then second part, I should be using my cutting strip. Um, second part is to make a card. And we've got a little card here. So I'm going to cut this piece out and make it into a card. So that'll be cutting about here. Like that. And then cut. here and then cut here and then that will go nicely onto my card like that. So we glue that down and then we have a nice autumn greetings card. Number two, and then number three, of course, the perpetual bookmark, piece that's left over. And I'm sure you've done this before yourself. And just trim that little bit there a little bit. And we can do a hole 
in the top. Like that. And cut a piece of string. I think string is quite nice for the tie on something like this because it's a bit more rustic, isn't it? And we'll just pop that through there. And lo and behold, we have a nice little set. Something like this obviously makes a nice little gift. So there we are. I've transformed that one painting, which was a bit too much, into three items. A painting, a card and a bookmark. And I hope you enjoyed that. It's one way of rescuing a painting that you feel has gone a little bit too far. So I'll let you go. Please give us a like and subscribe and turn on notifications. Don't forget to do that so that you get told when we have posted a new video. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. So happy uh, back to school, everybody. See you again soon. Bye for now.